So, hello everyone. This is our last talk from Kirill. I hope you can hear me. And now I want to give you the stage. Here you go. Yeah. Hey. So, when I first joined Parity in October 2017, we already had the first prototypes of that amazing tool, creatively named Parity Designer, lying around. The concept of that tool was brilliant. You have your old phone, you install a special app on it, you turn the airplane mode forever, and this is your hardware wallet now. And it was nice, and it was fun, and we developed it further, and now you might know it about Pol uh, like Polkadot Vault, because it's not only a parity product, and it's not only for, well, it's for every project in the Polkadot ecosystem. There is one tiny problem with that. That problem being the most reasonable hardware to store your secret keys on requires to have a secret chip. So that is Apple hardware, not most of Androids, unfortunately. So if you want to have higher stakes, you probably want an iOS device. And as any security professional, and I've seen a couple of them in the room already, as any of those will tell you, having a 3G modem in your secure device makes it insecure immediately, no matter how much of an airplane mode you are in. Because that's a special separate computer in, on your motherboard, which is talking to your memory through the direct memory access product. So the reasonable hardware to run Pirate Designer was iPod Touches. And as you might have heard, those are discontinued a couple of years ago. And I even participated in an effort in buying out as much as I can on the European continent to ship a Signer software on those. But that can't go anymore. So we figured out a new device. And we called that Campella. And we are building it, and we are aiming to make it the most secure key storage device for every project in the Polkadot ecosystem. And yeah, also, Campella. That's a fish. This fish, to be exact. That's a flounder fish, which is remarkable because it's flat, and it has some sort of e-ink happening on the upside of it to better mimicry the bottom of the sea. So yeah. Having that as our inspiration, can we please have an aquarium on stage? <laughs> and I'd like to have a video from the camera. So, Campella, <laughs> can we please switch back to the slide so far? How did you like my two little helpers? The remarkable thing about them is they have 20 years of hardware experience on average, and they're helping me building this tool. So, this is how Polkadot Vault is working. You have your online wallet, mostly Polkadot.js, and you use that to form a transaction. And then you show a QR code to the camera on your device, and your device then recognizes that, asks you for the pin code, and you sign, and then the QR code with the transaction signature goes back to the Polkadot.js. And this is nice. This is useful protocol. Why don't we extend on that? And therefore, Campbell of the wallet works fully compatible with that. Just we need to have this part of the picture to adjust our tooling to not having camera on this thing. If any of you have any devices working with e-ink, you might know that you can't have camera on that. Like, viewfinding will be terrible. So we had a second best thing. And we had an NFC payload to charge those things up and to send the transactions on it. And with that, we don't need a battery. We don't need a charging port. And that incredible flex I did with an aquarium 
those are truly watertight and pretty solid. Uh, so we are using our phones to transfer this QR code with transaction data to the device. And then we are using the NFC on your phone to transfer this to Campella and also to power up whatever software it has. And then on the big e-ink screen, you can uh, on the big e-ink screen, you can see the transaction in a fully parsed way. And you, if you haven't heard, seen the presentation about better data, the special research project we have to power devices like that, please look it up in the recordings from this uh, uh, event, because that is something without which the Campbell wouldn't be able to function. Can you please turn on back the camera? Yep. So this is the device. And under normal circumstances, you have this small token going into the whole of it. Because to talk NFC to your phone, something needs to respond to your phone. And the Campbell itself cannot, because Campbell itself should be absolutely isolated. It shouldn't emit any radio waves. Otherwise, it can steal your keys. So we have this tiny inset, which normally goes in here. And this is just like stupid uh, NFC tag, like the hotel room ca card or something like that. We, and we use this to just talk back to your phone so it knows that it needs to respond. But to prove it that there is nothing special about this, I'm going to throw it away. And I'm going to use my like, public transit card from Berlin just as a way to activate my phone with an NFC payload. So I'm doing this, and I'm doing this. And magic please happen. Can it? Yep. OK. Stage awkwardness always happens. Here we are. And and I'm pressing generate. And here is our seed phrase. Please don't write it down. It's mine. You get yours in due time. And after that is done, we are getting, we are getting our QR code, which we can now so, uh, show to the Polkadot.js. So let's address that address. Here we go. And that is, OK, that is that. Compile a test account. Let's send some wastes to that. go, and let's send them back using the Campbell device, because that's the only device which has key, unless some of you is really good with handwriting and recorded all that seed phrase. So let's transfer everything we've got, make transfer, sign it with QR. And now we're getting to that flow which I mentioned earlier. We cannot have a camera on this device. There is no power to it. There is no viewfinder to it. So we use the phone. But the important difference with a pirate designer that this phone doesn't need to be offline phone. It doesn't need to be a secret phone. It's your common phone. It's something you'd use daily. Uh, I put mine in the airplane mode, so like my notifications wouldn't nag you. But that's just the technicality of the stage work. And we have a special application, which is called Slitty, which is just an adapter where you scan the QR code on, sta uh, on screen. And then you put the whole composition back together. And pray that it will power up faster this time. Hello? I will stop flexing, and I will do the normal thing. It's a good thing I have a backup plan. So you have it like this. It will take a little bit to parse the transaction, because we are now doing everything we talk in the metadata talk. We are not only sending the bytes of the payload of the transaction. We are sending the full metadata excerpts, which allow Campbell to parse exactly what transaction I'm talking about. And even now, without like, finishing the metadata project, we support, I think, everything except for the XCM uh, most complicated transactions in the ecosystem. And you see, in a uh, reasonably readable screen, you see the full info on the transaction. And it might be like as big as you want. 
And uh, yep, on the next screen, you see everything about the metadata I've just sent, like a block hash, transaction version, and everything you are committing to the chain, maybe without knowing, like that uh, uh, block tip. And now, now, hello? Yep. I pressed back, and I needed to press forward. In the normal life, there will be a pin code. But I don't want to bother you with typing pin codes on stage. So like I asked this particular firmware version to have that compiled out. So here is my transaction QR code, which I show back, back to the camera. And if things go well, which I hope, yeah, here we go. We just transacted some Westis back to the West End wallet. Yeah, so but I said that I asked some special crafted firmware for this device for this particular show. Maybe it would be cool if any of you can have your custom firmware. It doesn't come without risks. Bad custom firmware will steal your keys. There is nothing I can do from a firmware showing this seed phrase back on screen. But I think that at this moment in time, having something you would be able to program and see how it works with your chain on your own, or maybe experiment, maybe building a GPG signing agent, or like really, really big and clunky YubiKey out of it. It really outweighs all the risks of not, like, I wouldn't trust a million dollars to this, not with those ports. This is why the final devices would not have any ports or any external connections. But so far, we're talking about DevKit, and DevKit comes with a tiny adapter, which you can plug in your Kampala on one side, and you just plug it into the USB on another side. And where is my port? Here I am. Yep. And I've already prepared. What? OK, my UDF rules are a little bit slow. I'm sorry for that. So we just identified that there is a flashing board attached to our computer. And we ship you the full set of a flashing software, which would allow you to take a firmware like I'm doing right now, and flash it on the Campella dev kit of your choice. So we have a special firmware which we use in testing to make sure that the screen works, that like memory works, everything we ship to you works. So let's do that. And we are flashing, and it tells us to have fun. Thank you for that. So let's see if it works. Let's Let's boot it again. And as a proper testing firmware, it shows you the device ID on the main page. Then you enter in the menu. It does a tiny self-test. And we were bored. So like, you can play Tetris on this thing. Thank you all. You can pre-order DevKids right now. You can go to that website and you can pay 30 dots and shipping costs. And as soon as more of those will come up from our manufacturing line, you will receive one for yourself. And yeah, special thanks to the Polka Treasury for funding all this. And unlike maybe major of our competitors, we are fully transparently open source under the free license. So both the hardware and software is available fully. So if you are interpreting your mind and you want to undercut our profits from selling that, not that we are making it on, but Maybe you can do better. Start manufacturing it right away, please. Name is ours, we name it, and go on. Or like have a workshop. Like everyone likes soldering those tiny SMD pieces, right? Like have fun. Thank, Thank you very all. much. <laughs> and there's still time left for a good Q&A. So if there are some questions, please raise your hands. And I will come to you and give you a beautiful microphone. Whoop. Say your name, and then a question. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, do you have any list of the wallets that will integrate with the Campella right now? Nope. I, hear, like, I hope to like, come back <coughs> tonight. <coughs> I'm terrible, sorry. So I was hoping to go back to my hotel tonight, open up the pre-orders list, and have all the wallets in there so we can start talking to them.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, just to extend a little bit on that, if you are a mobile wallet, it makes all the sense to skip the stupid dance with QR codes. You can talk to the device directly. That protocol is already sp also specified, and that's incredibly simple in the sense that Apple wouldn't stop you from using some proprietary like payment API. It's just yelling in the void the bytes of a transaction in sequence. That's it. More hands. Then we'd say thank you very much. Thank you very much for this amazing day. And now let's grab some fish, right? <laughs>